Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I will be doing a makeup tutorial as requested and I'm actually going to do a look with this beautiful Pat McGrath palette, Mothership 2 Sublime. So when you look at this palette, I feel like the two shades that really stand out are the green and the bronzy gold shade right here. So those are the two shades, these two that really, really stand out. But I actually really want to do a look with one, two, and this shade right here. So I'm going to start off with just adding a little bit of a concealer on my eyelid. A little bit. Just to blank out my eyelid. I'm just going to set that with some powder. Now using the Natasha Denona brush 12, I'm going to go into this beautiful muted rose shade. It's a gorgeous color and it actually looks really good on brown skin. So the first time I popped this on, I was really impressed. Check that out. It's kind of like a muted, rosy, cranberry shade. It's also really, really perfect for the office. It has a satin finish and you can kind of use this all over your lid, some black eye pencil, black or brown, and you are good to go beautiful color and then I'm just gonna go in and just buff that out I'm using Wayne Goss brush number three and now I'm going to go into this dark brown shade just to buff out the outer we taking Wayne Goss brush number four and just going to buff it out adding a little bit more just buffing this out now I'm going to go into this beautiful duochrome right here I'm going to pop that right into the center lid Ooh, check that out oh my god this is so beautiful Ooh, I'm gonna take a bit more I've dimmed my lights and I think you can definitely see that duochrome right here. I've got my phone light and I'm trying to see if I can show you. Oh, there you go. You can see there's a pink, there's lilac purple, there's gold. It is so beautiful, this duochrome. I'm so obsessed. And this is also a very wearable color. It doesn't look so intense that you can't go out on it. It's just check that out. Now I'm just going to line my upper line just with Inglot AMC 101 Black Liner. I'm going to do that standing up in my mirror because I can't do that with my little mirror right here. I'm going to get a very crooked line, so I'll be back. So I've, I've added a thin black line just at the top there. I like to do only thin lines because I have small eyes. If I do a thick looking liner, you won't be able to see all that eyeshadow work, which would be a shame. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next, and I do this every single time I use pencil liner, is that I go over the top of it with a black eyeshadow. And that just gives me a really, really dark, looking line and I love that. I love that contrast and I'm gonna do that with this Wayne Gosh brush in 08. This is such a teeny tiny brush. I mean look at that. Look how thin this is. And what I used to use before that I believe was a Morphe brush. There it is. Morphe M165 which is a really good brush to use as well but these two are like miles apart in comparison to the Wayne Goss the Morphe is very thick so the Morphe always gives me a slightly thicker line but if I want to retain that really thin line 
I absolutely go for the Wayne Goss. This is probably the thinnest brush I have ever seen and I really, really, really love it. So I'm going to go pick up some black eyeshadow on this teeny tiny brush and I'm just going to stipple this product right on top of my pencil liner and that's it. And I wriggle it a little bit because I just want that black eyeshadow to attach to that black liner. So this is the difference between the black eyeshadow that I've just stippled on top here, but here is just the pencil black line. And I haven't even done my waterline, so I'm going to pick up my Shiseido Nippon Noir, sorry, Shiseido Kajal Ink Artist, and I'm just going to apply that in my inner waterline. That's just going to give me a lot of that black contrast it looks so much better than this eye so these little tiny steps in my opinion really do make a big difference and i i never skip these steps every time i do an eye look okay now i do have fallout so i'm just going to apply a moisturizer right underneath just going to wipe it clean You can see right here how much fallout I had. I'm going to use my Bobbi Brown cream corrector in the shade Peach and just going to apply that right here. So I've got my corrector and then for my base I got a sample of the By Terry CC Serum. So this is the one that I saw Ali Andrea in one of her videos use and I was really really intrigued. Like the color looked really nice. I'm just gonna do this and hopefully not spill any. So I'm very very intrigued to try this product and actually see how this compares to my holy grail Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter. So on one side of my face I'm going to use a flawless filter and the other side we're going to try this very very expensive serum concentrate that is supposed to give you glowy skin and going to see what that looks like. So I'm going to pick up some of this on my finger. So this is the shade. This is called Apricot Glow. I actually really like the color of this. It's this pale gold yellow shade. It looks really beautiful. And it doesn't look very shimmery, which I like. So I'm going to pop this right here. And so this is what the shade looks like. The texture of this product is very, very thin. Very, very thin. It's very fragrant. It's got that classic by Terry scent. So if you don't like that, you are not going to like it. So that's spread really nicely. I mean, it's given a nice glow to my skin. I potentially it's a little bit light but I what I do like about it is that it's not too warm and it's not taking away from my olive undertone so I do like that about it and it's kind of dried down so it's no longer maneuverable it sort of just sets very interesting formula like my pore area where I didn't put it on and then if you look at this area where I did put it on, there's actually a big difference. This area right here, and you can kind of see the line where I stopped blending. This area looks so much smoother than here. Ooh, interesting. This is a very expensive product, so I'm definitely going to give this a go a few more times to see if it's actually going to be worth the money. Okay, I'm going to try the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter on this side. So the color is different. This is a little bit warmer, more peachy. This is shade 5, by the way, if I didn't mention. And I'm just going to... apply the Charlotte Tilbury. There's a huge price difference between the Charlotte Tilbury and the By Terry. So my question will be, is it actually better than the Charlotte Tilbury? 
So this is what the Charlotte Tilbury looks like. I'm going to add a little bit just on the forehead here. I'm going less with the Charlotte Tilbury because it's a little bit more shimmery than a little bit more glowy than the By Terry. By Terry, I didn't actually see a lot of shimmer particles, whereas the the uh, the Charlotte Tilbury one is slightly metallic. So comparison time. We have By Terry, and then we have Charlotte Tilbury. Which one do you guys think looks better? I will say that I kind of like the very smoothing finish that I get from the By Terry. It just makes my skin look smoother and I was not expecting that. So I'm going to have to say that I really like the fact that it has really smoothed out my skin. The Charlotte Tilbury one hasn't done that. My skin still looks like skin, but it's given me this almost metallic glow. I really enjoy the Charlotte Tilbury for sure. Hmm, but I feel like the By Terry one is probably going to be a really good option for those of us that have cheek texture. Whew. I'm going to have to keep trying that. So foundation today, I'm just going to go with my Dior Skin Glow Foundation in the shade 3 Warm Olive. This is my favorite shade of all time because it actually matches me really, really well. Just taking my Hourglass Foundation brush, I'm just going to buff this out. A whole review around the Dior Forever and of course the skin glow foundation so do check that out if you're interested i really really love my dior forever glow it is so beautiful so the foundation applied on top of the by terry serum pretty well doesn't look cakey that's one of the things i worry about sometimes with products like that is it going to change how my foundation applies and I know how this foundation applies on top of the Charlotte Tilbury it always applies beautifully on top of that so I knew I was not going to have issues there okay now I'm going to go with my Tarte concealer in the Tarte ultra creamy concealer in the shade 37g just going to apply that Now, for those of you that have an olive undertone, this shade does not have an olive undertone. So just know that, that actually has golden to peachy tones, which is great to color correct with, but definitely nothing olive in here. Oh my God. Okay, you have to see this. I've just applied this concealer with a damp beauty blender. Now the side I used that By Terry product, it has actually caked up right here and nothing like that has happened on the Charlotte Tilbury side. Can you believe it? It's, it's all cakey right here. Wow, I was not expecting. Oh, it's getting worse as I'm touching it. No. Okay, I'm trying my best to make this not look cakey there we go i'm just smoothing it out and that seems to be oh that's better oh my gosh really had a major cake moment right there but that makes me a little bit concerned considering how expensive the cc serum is like it shouldn't be giving me this much trouble so i'm picking up my pat mcgrath under eye blurring powder but i'm gonna pick it up with a damp sponge and i'm just gonna go in and just pat that i'm not baking i'm just applying a very very small amount just to set that under eye area dewy glowy and this side looks smooth but really really matte next up i'm going to apply a cream bronzer and i have been dying over this bronzer so this is the brand salt new york 
right here. So this is a, a mini palette that they sell and you can buy these beautiful cream pants. Look at those beautiful blushes. So those two are the top blushes. One is coral, the other one is like a beautiful pinky raspberry shade. And then right here we have the highlighter and of course the cream bronzer right here. This brand is amazing. Their, their cream products have such a beautiful formulation. Now with this eye look that I've done, I don't think I'll be able to do either of the blush shades. I could do this, but I think it's going to look too pink. I'm going to need something really light just to match with that eye. So I'm not going to use that. I will use the bronzer though. The bronzer is beautiful. You will see it. So I'm just going to pick it up on my middle finger. I'm going to dab it on right here. So first of all, the shade is really, really stunning. Can you see there's like barely any red undertone? Like I don't even see a red undertone. It looks like a yellow based cream bronzer. Yes, that's what I've been looking for. A yellow based cream bronzer. Check that out. I love it. So I'm just going to go in with my hourglass brush number two and just going to blend that in. And that looks so beautiful. And that was super easy. Like that was it. I didn't fast forward. I didn't pause. That's it. It's blended. How stunning. So I've been really, really obsessed with this cream bronzer. I think it's just totally perfect for my skin tone because it's not overly warm and red. It's got that really, really beautiful yellow undertone. Ah, yes. And of course, what's even better is that the cream formulation is just perfection. It just blends seamlessly into the skin. Absolutely no issues. Like normally I would just leave it like this. I think this looks perfect, but I'm going to apply just a little bit more right here. Just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit more. Also, this product kind of sets down once you apply it. It, it stays looking emollient, but it, it's not too greasy or too too oily or anything like that which i really really love and you can see it's a true bronzer it's not cool tone Ugh, perfection how beautiful right now for blush i'm gonna go with the vestment atelier blush in the shade chouchette which is one of my favorite blushes from Westman atelier it's got like a, a pinky peachy shade to it. It's so stunning. And I am just going to pop that. Look at that. How beautiful is this color? Oh my God, I'm dying. That is so beautiful. So I'm just going to apply that. Ooh. I'm actually going to go in and mix in a little bit of petal from Westman Atelier as well because I think this look is leaning a little bit more rosy, a little bit more pinky than peachy. So I'm just going to add the pink. Oh yeah, that's definitely better. I'm going to add that. gorgeous so everything is applying a little bit matte on the by terry side even my blush is going on matte not dewy like on the charlotte tilbury side which is not a bad thing i mean if you have oily skin that's probably a pretty good idea everything from the bronzer to the cream blush everything just applied matte on this side well, let's quickly finish the eyes. I'm just going to take this shade right here and tap that really well so I'm not going to get fallout. And then I'm just going to slide that right underneath. So 
And that's it. I'm also going to, to go into that brown shade. Just a small amount, tap, 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 and just add a little bit. Sorry, my camera stopped recording. So in the meantime, I've done, I finished off my eye by adding on mascara, I've done my brows, and now I'm just popping on the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick and the shade Wedding Bells. Just a beautiful pinky shade. I'm also going to add the Charlotte Tilbury gloss in the shade Opal Magic right on top of that. And this shade I feel like will look really nice because it's quite similar to the tone on my eyes. It's got that peachy, golden, slightly pink tones. And let's just see how that looks. Oh yes, I like it. This is the shade Opal Magic in the Jewel Lip Glosses. I am very happy how that looks. Hey guys, so I have just added in some Dior powder. I've actually just filmed a review for this, so check that out if you haven't. This is a beautiful powder. I've really, really been loving it. Now, this is the final look. I'm just gonna pop in a bit forward. I really love how this look turned out. It's really soft and pretty. And I think the eye, although a duochrome is actually really wearable. I love the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter side. So this side, I just think, looks super glowy and dewy and healthy and skin-like. I really, really love this side. Unfortunately, the By Terry side, I'm not really a big fan of. I think this side just looks really, really average. So my first impression regarding the By Terry Glowy Serum is that I'm not really a fan. I will keep trying it maybe with other foundations and see if it looks better with other foundations. But so far, my Holy Grail Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter definitely wins. And it's not as expensive as the By Terry. If you enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and I'll see you guys in my next video. See ya!